the perfect side dish to go with the ribs. The dipping sauce, and you have yourself a meal. Like, you get kicked or do you get uh, rice pudding? No, the thing's gonna be a little bit more stark than that. You know, people don't know. Oh, here's the economy, here's the economy. But the closer you get to the emergency room, the economy is the last thing you think about. I'm going to pat them dry and put them back up. That's what it looked like, all nice and padded dry. Now we're going to season the meat. And these are the seasons that I like to use. I like to use my Old Bay seasoning. I like to use my accent. I like to use my salt free. It's the Southwest Sweet and Smoky to give it that barbecue flavor. I like to use my onion powder. And I like to use my garlic powder. So now all we're going to do is we're going to set our meat right here. And we're just going to add the seasoning to it and blend it all together. It doesn't really matter the order. I just put it on my onion powder first, the garlic powder. Then I go with my onion. Then I go with my sweet and hickory. Accent. And my old bay. And then I get in there and I blend them all together. So everyone got that coated seasoning on it. Everyone, it looks to be a little bit scarce, 
I add some more. I want to make sure each and every one is coated very, very nicely. Then I go back and add some more. I just make sure each one, because each one gets an individual who's going to taste it, so you don't want any of them to be short on the flavor. <clears throat> I don't really add my salt or any salt to this because some of the flavor has a little bit of salt in it. So you don't want your meat to come out tasting salty. So you're just gonna put a nice coat on it and go at it again. So each one of them, you wanna make sure each and every piece of your meat that's what it looks like when they're really nice and coated properly very good now that our meat is nicely seasoned and coated we're going to set it to the side for a few minutes while we prepare our flour now I always take a pan like this, and I take my flour, and I pour it in generously, because you don't have to flour coat all your meat. Now, what I do with my flour, most people don't like to season the flour. I do, that's not enough. I've got a lot of meat. Make sure it's nice and coated. Now, I add two more things that I don't normally add to my meat. I add my paprika. I add my black pepper. And then I add my Lowry's. Now I come back and I add my other flavor that I added to the meat. Accent. This assures that every part of your meat going to have a great taste in each bite. Now, some people use a spoon. I like to use my hand. That mix it up real good. Make sure you hold it up. Make sure you hold it up. Now, you have a very flavorful pot. Ready to cook meat. Now, it's ready to cook. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn our heat up to high. We're going to add the vegetable oil. We're going to coat the pan real good with just a little bit extra. So therefore we're going to fry it just like you're frying chicken or pork chop, really, believe it or not. Now we're going to let that heat up and then we're going to start battering and inserting our fried ribs. Now, let's check and see if our oil is ready. You take a little bit of pinch of flour and you drop it on top. If it fries on top, you know that it's ready. If it sinks down to the bottom, you know that it's not ready. But right now, our oil is ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to coat, be careful, each of our ribs individually in our flour mix. Be careful it don't splatter all over the place. So 
but each one really, really good. It's all the different kinds of beef. It's just tight. Because you don't drop it in your pan. So it's just each piece of beef. And I just go to that without rice. I force it down and eat part of the beef. I set it on top to the side. Don't be afraid. You can eat it all in there. This one is so delicious. We've got no pieces. Ready to go. One half of the beef is in time. So y'all cook the rest of the same. Turn. And that's what you're looking at. Well, now what I always do, that's your all. That's your all. That's your all. That's your all. So now, what I always do is I shake off any excess flour. Make sure every piece of meat is covered. I shake off any excess because you don't want this to go down to the bottom and burn. And I just place it right into the meat, into the, the meat right into the, the grease. Now we're just going to turn them over after about five or six minutes. Wow, that's looking good. You want to know what golden brown look like? That's what golden brown should look like on your ears. Very nice. I'm turning each one of them over, being very careful, making sure you don't make it too sudden to move because this grease is hot and when it splatters, it burns. We're going to let it cook on this side. Oh, those are going to be delicious. And let them cook for another five to seven minutes on that side. While those are cooking, are just about done, I'm going to prepare to take them out. So I like to use my cutting board and I add a double layer of tissue, not tissue, but paper, hand paper. And then I like to add my strainer. So therefore, when I take them out and put them on this, it has room to breathe and any excess grease will drop down onto the paper towel. So let's turn these over again to see what they look like. Beautiful. Nice. These are going to be so delicious. Very nice. Okay. And let them cook for another five or six minutes on each side. Flip them again. Make sure all sides are well done. Very nice. They're just about there. With another couple of minutes, we're going to take them out. These bad boys are ready to come out. Make sure you grab them real, real tight. 
so they don't slip and fall back into your grease. Shake them a little bit, and just place them on your cooling pan so they can strain. And while these are ready to come out, the other batch is ready to go in. Just put them on your cooling pan, just strain. While these are ready to come out, the other batch is ready to go in. Take another look at them. Now some of these are ready to come off right now. Shake them. Just set them aside. The ones that are really done, those are the ones we want to take out first. And that is a beautiful rack of ribs, fried. You can't have great fried ribs without a great sauce. So what we're gonna do is show you how we make the delicious sweet and tangy sauce. First, let's start off with my sweet baby back, or sweet baby raised barbecue sauce. I pour about a half of a bottle in the saucepan. Then I add the French's yellow mustard. Then I add about three tablespoons of honey because I like my mine sweet. You can go less on the honey if you don't want it sweet. Then I take two limes and I squeeze the lime juice in it. The limes and the, the mustard gives it that sweet and tangy taste. And your honey, you know that gives you your, your sweet. So, you cut it on low. Don't cut it up too high. Because it will cook too fast. Squeeze my limes in. And be careful. Don't let it bubble up on you. Because it starts bubbling real quick. Then we stir it up. Real good. And you want to cook until it darkens.
That's what it should look like. Not too watery, not too thick. I like that. Now you got a great dipping sauce. And remember, the honey gives it a sweet taste. The mustard gives it this tangy taste. And the limes gives it this sour. That's sweet and sour and tangy. Some people use lemons, some people use limes. I like to use the limes to give it that twang. Now, as a matter of fact, some people like to take the lime and cut it out because they like the pulp. Once they've gotten the juice, they get the pulp. And you can just spoon out the seeds if there are any seeds in it. Now, you got the perfect dipping sauce. And that's how you make it. Now, as a finishing touch, I like to sprinkle on a little smokehouse maple made by McCormick's Grill Mates. And this stuff gives it a really good flavor and kick. I like to spread it on my meat. I turn it over and do the same thing. Now, you want to taste something really good, you take your dipping sauce, you take a piece of that meat, dip it into your dipping sauce, and oh my God, that is delicious. anything like me you know that barbecue just not barbecue unless you have your barbecue baked beans so I get four small cans or two large cans of Boston baked beans put them into my pan Spread them out. Then I like to add Domino's brown sugar. I just spread it all over the top. They're going to be really sweet. I like mine sweet. I mix that in. Don't worry about it melting. It's going to melt when they put it in the oven. In the meantime, you should be preheating your oven to 400 degrees. Now, after my brown sugar, I like to go with grandma's molasses. Not too much. Just coat the top. Perfect. I stir that up, put it in the mixture. And a 
the last thing I add is my sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce. And you stir that in. And you got the perfect baked beans. Now, as my oven is heating up, I'm mixing this up real nice. That's what they look like. Now I'm going to pop them in the oven for about 15 minutes. You are set to go. Okay, let's pop them in the oven. And then in about 15 to 18 minutes, you're gonna have the world's best tasting baked beans. Now, let's see what we got. Wow, those look delicious. Baked beans. The perfect side dish to go with the ribs. The dipping sauce, and you have yourself a meal, ladies and gentlemen. You have been in the kitchen once again with Dr. Lenny Moore, celebrity hypnotist and celebrity chef. And you have just learned my secret recipe to making baby back fried ribs, baked beans, and the ingredients to make my secret dipping sauce. You can follow me at Dr. Lenny Moore on YouTube, at Lenny Moore on Facebook, at Lenny J. Moore on Instagram, and at Lenny Moore on Twitter. You can also follow me on my webpage, on my website, at Dr. Lenny Moore. I hope you enjoy it. Try it. If you like it, share it with your friends. Enjoy. See you next time.